I cannot laugh a happy where France is full of victor. I cannot laugh a happy those who seem never to have known sorrow, from whose hearts gushes continually the caroling of thoughtless pleasure, unless it be the joy, the glad and innocent mirth of children, bursting in happiness from out pure hearts fresh from the hand of deity. Men who have seen life beheld its miseries, whose thoughts have reached the compass of ripe years, should have within his heart a ceaseless spring of gentle and outwelling sympathies, and they should course throughout his spirit's being as mountain rivulets traverse the earth, refreshing in their course each dropping flower, renewing beauty in each withered plant, and helping everywhere to germinate the seeds of virtue. And thus would mirth be chaste, and life be joy, and all our wild propensities be checked and all our eagerness for gaudy show that so conscious of pagic suffering would die. This world be real happiness, and though some purity makes sensitive, would shrink no more, but ivy-like entwine the tendrils of affection round strong hearts. Love's a byword, friendship but a name, and though we use them, rarely do we think how strong and deep and thrilling is their power. God is love. It is his very essence, and yet the spirit of a god that man treats mockingly and makes a jest of all the gentler and the purer attributes of soul. Of it the spirit of true love, untrembled, unrestrained, might wander forth, breathing a balm on every bleeding heart, binding up wounds, forgiving injury, and by uniting each dissevered link, encircle the great family of man in one electric chain of sympathy. Then would our earth again be paradise, and man, for hair to suffering, yet soothed by gentleness and love, would be more chaste, like gold tried by refiners, and more fit to win this great inheritance of love and life eternal.